All right, coming up next, a matchup for the UFC heavyweight division title. Well, for a long time, he's been mentioned with the baddest men on the planet. For a long time, though, the title fight eluded him. Not anymore. Here he is, the number one heavyweight contender, finally making this walk and cracking a smile. He's waited a long time for this. He's not expecting a 25-minute war. He believes he has the power and the skills to get this thing done quickly. I guess we'll find out. All right, so here he is making his way to the Octagon for another heavyweight title defense. This has been the baddest man on the planet now for several years, and he has taken on all comers more often than not, leaving them twitching on the canvas. Knockout power for days. The question is tonight, with a challenge like this, can he walk out the way he came in as the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world? Our tale of the day for this, our main event of the evening. So a more than five-year gap between these two fighters when it comes to the age, and they both possess a similar height and reach. Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the Honda Center in Anaheim, California. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of nine wins, three losses, and one no contest. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 260 pounds, fighting at a Boca Raton Colada, presenting the challenger, Todd Duffy. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 12 wins, 3 losses. He stands 6 feet 5 inches tall, weighing in at 252 pounds. Presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Tom! All right, this is for the championship. You've been giving your instructions in the dressing room. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions. You will have a clean fight. Touch gloves. Let's make this that we dream of as MMA fans. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by this jump. Oh, 
Circling to his right. Both guys throwing potential fight enders here in the early going. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Ooh. Wow, what a head kick. Oh, straight right. That is... Oh, man, this dude is good. That one was thrown to end the fight. Yep. <laughs> and they separate. Well, he has stayed busy and he has stayed accurate. Nice combination. Very accurate. A lot of activity in the hands. Look phenomenal tonight. Oh, lands a stiff punch there. Nice connection. Oh, nice land. That was a thudding leg kick. Oh, single collar time here. Whip his hip into that kick. Oh! Edge kick! Under two minutes to go in a back and forth first round here. Oh, that's a good strike there by Todd Duffy. All right, good job by him there to raise the guard and protect his head. He's doing a good job of keeping the guard high, blocking his head, making sure not taking those damaging strikes up top. And a nice jab there, champ. The jab was a lost art in mixed martial arts. Guys that found it, and they're fighting behind the real well. Oh, nice jab. How's his opponent still standing? I mean, I have no idea. This fight is supposed to be over. And it might not be over now, but it's going to be over very soon. Duffy gets the tie clinch here. He changes the angle. Oh! Start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Oh, he might be out. Final seconds of round one. He's got him. Round two coming up next. All right, so a huge round for him there, DC, particularly when it came to the head kicks. Take us through the replay. I mean, those head kicks are beautiful. He was finding a spot. He was wrapping it around his opponent's arms and landing those head kicks over and over and over. He did a good job of really, really setting his opponent up with his hands and then taking those opportunities that were presented to him. All right, DC, buckle up. Here we go with our next round. High number of kicks landed in the previous round, and he'll look to keep it going. Oh! Oh! Maybe time to get the bonus checks ready. I mean, this fight is about done. He's got him hurt very bad with his head kick. Now he has to find one more strike in the night. Well, he continues to do a nice job here defensively, protecting his head, raising the goal. Oh! He's hurt. Serve him up. Okay, now goes in and secures the takedown. Oh, wow. right now. He's got to recognize this is dangerous. This is a dangerous position. Nicely done. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now, oh, it looks like he's trying to isolate Norm, maybe set up a Kimura here, DC. He's attacking the Kimura. Watch for him to step over to try to get him up on his hip. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. And he's out. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. The Kabor is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. And he's out.
about the speed on that reversal there. I mean, I know you can get out of some bad spots, but not with that type. Maybe an opportunity to get a choke here. Yeah, he lifts the head and goes under. Looks like he's trying to get a bulldog choke. your uncle used to do to you when you were a little kid. And this might just be a matter of time. And now he taps. The last time I saw a bulldog took was at a family barbecue <laughs> and somebody grabbed one of the younger kids and stood side to side and choked them. You don't do this in a high-level martial arts fight. But this man just did exactly well, the barbecue that. Barbecue in Louisiana, he better be ready to get bulldog choke. Better get ready for a bulldog choke. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. He was able to get the fight to the ground exactly where he wanted it. Eventually, his opponent gave him an opportunity to get a submission. He did that, and he should be very proud of the work he did tonight in the octagon. So there he is, the baddest man on the planet, UFC heavyweight champion of the world, a title that every heavyweight wants. He has it after the win by submission here tonight. He leaned on the grappling, and he got the job done in a big way. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at 3 minutes, 52 seconds of round number 2. Declaring the winner by tap out. And still! Well, DC, you know what it's like to be the UFC heavyweight champion. It's not the easiest belt to defend. Kind of made it look easy to me. I mean, that's why the belt changes and s changes so fast. Things change so quick at heavyweight. But with this gentleman, with this guy, you know that he has all the skills to reign atop a volatile division for a long time. It is a heavyweight title fight between Francis Ngannou and Anthony Johnson. Well, for a long time, he's been mentioned with the baddest men on the planet. For a long time, though, the title fight eluded him. Not anymore. Here he is, the number one heavyweight contender, finally making this walk. And Cracking a smile. He's waited a long time for this. He's not expecting a 25-minute war. He believes he has the power and the skills to get this thing done quickly. I guess we'll find out.
Well, a lot of people think it's the most significant title in combat sports. No argument from me. Baddest man on the planet, UFC heavyweight champion. There he is in the flesh. What an absolute monster. What a title reign it has been. But a serious challenge in front of him here tonight. When this man became the heavyweight champion, a lot of people thought that this challenger was the one who would wrest the belt away. Now the fight is here. We'll see if we get a new champion or if this man continues one of the greatest heavyweight legacies the Octagon has ever seen. Our tale of the tape for this heavyweight championship fight. Ngannou is 33. Johnson is 36. Ngannou weighed in at 250 pounds. He will have a five-inch reach advantage. And now for the official introductions, we go inside the octagon where we find the venerable Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Loving. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the Honda Center in Anaheim, California. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 22 wins, 6 losses. He stands 6 feet 2 inches tall, weighing in at 235 pounds. Fighting out of Boca Raton, Florida, presenting the challenger, Anthony Rumble Johnson. And now, introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a boxer, holding a professional record of 17 wins, three losses. He stands six feet four inches tall, weighing in at 250 pounds. Fighting out of Paris, France, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of Francis, the Predator, and God! You have seatbelt on the line, guys. Protect yourself at all time. Obey my command at all time. If you want to touch love, do it now. Go back to your corner. They touch him up, and we are underway. to Kembe Mutombo, but he is blocking all these shots coming Man, his way. get that out of here. He sees it coming. You're going to have to mix it up. Shake that finger. Shake that finger. Johnson doing a nice job staying up right here. And now he's got that tie clinch. We'll see what he can do with it. Look at how he drives his team. Right into his opponent's pin section. All right, boy, Ty Clinch. A lot of elbows and knees could be coming from here. We'll see how he chooses to attack. Yeah, it's a very dangerous position, but an advantageous one for the offensive fighter. Watch for the defensive guy to try to break this immediately. That right hand hurt him a little bit. 
Well, he misses with the left punch there. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? Look at him drive his shin into his opponent's body with that body kick. Got the single collar tie. Mixes it up nicely in terms of staying heavy and also staying active. All right, so he lands another jab now, just snapping that thing off, DC. I believe that the jab was lost in mixed martial arts initially, but now it has been found, and it's been found by this young man in this octagon tonight. Oh, wow! Hits it! Landed a big kick there. Right hand gets up to block it. Nice leg kick lands. Oh, that's a good right hand. Johnson gets tagged by that straight punch. Nice land for the offense there. Oh! So a huge round for him there. His opponent will need Motrin tomorrow. Yeah. A lot of head kicks in that previous five minutes. He took way too many head kicks. He was trying to go forward. He was trying to pressure. And when he was doing that, he was carrying his hands low. And his opponent was just wrapping that kick up and over the side of his guard. Credit to his opponent for finding this shot, but really bad on him for not really making the adjustment to stop it. All right, so after he landed a high number of kicks in the previous round, we'll see if he can keep it going here as our next round gets on. He should stay the course. He's so educated with his legs and his feet that he's given his opponent a very difficult time trying to anticipate what's coming his way. Well, he's got the reach advantage. You might as well use it. Nice job there to find a home for that chip. Look at him whip his hip into that kick. And Connor's got a bruise now starting to appear on the right side of his body. Continues to mix it up, going to the head, mixing in some body shots. Able to check that kick as well. Jesus Christ. Oh, how about the right hand from Francis Ngannou? It's hard to watch. I can't imagine it feels awful. You watch Francis put out an entire generation of heavyweight that came before him. Put out Overeem. Put out Velasquez. Put out those Santos, and he did it all with that beautiful right hand. It is one of the You don't really stand after you take a head kick like this. That is such toughness to even be on the feet right now. And everything's landing with so much power. Well, he's right. He's had a huge strike right there. I'm not sure how many more of these his opponent can take. Massive shot that he landed. Great job. Oh, big damaging knees here to the body. Oh! Oh! oh. He's in trouble. He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. He's hurt bad. Wow. wow! He got him! Again, the winner here was so aggressive with his onslaught that ultimately appeared as though the outcome was an eventuality. So if you're the referee, you got to protect the fighter, and I thought he did a good job of doing just that. All right, let's take a look back at the replay. It ends up a knockout, but this was really a striking clinic from the moment they touched one. I mean, a competitive fight that one guy finally found the shot that ended the fight. But both of these warriors displayed a ton of heart. One guy got the finish, but neither guy should be disappointed in their performance. go to Bruce Buffer. He has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Leving has called a stop to this contest at 2 minutes, 39 seconds of round number 2. Declaring the winner by knockout and new undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world Anthony Rumble. There is a new baddest 
man on the planet. There's the new UFC heavyweight champion. You don't get them all right, DC, but you thought this was going to be the result, and we got a new champ. I mean, he has so much power and such an ability to shut the lights off that you almost saw it coming. Congratulations to the new baddest man on the planet.